Hello everyone and welcome to the first lecture of this course where we will be discussing different types of special reinforced concrete structures which are my corbels or brackets and my beam ledges. So first of all we're going to start with uh, the design of my corbel. This is going to be our first example then when we are done with that we are going to move to our beam ledges. Now if you look at this image here, let me open it here so we get a better view of it. We can see that we have precast concrete structures, which are my holocore slab. Now these holocore slabs are going to be placed on uh, precast beams. And these precast beams are going to be supported on my corbels or brackets. And if you can see these things here that are coming out of my columns this is my core bell or we can take it as a short cantilever coming out of my column so as we've always said in order to better understand the structure we need to know the straining actions that are acting on it now here what we are going to do is we are going to design for my core bell according to four different failure criterias and we are going to discuss these criteria now and while we are discussing these failure criteria we are going to get a better image of the straining actions that take place on my corbel so if you look at this image here we can see the four different types of failure criteria that occur within my corbel or that I should reinforce in order to try to prevent these failure conditions so the first failure condition that I have here is one my shear plane. So we said that my beam is going to be placed on my core bell. And I have this steel plate here. So what's going to happen is my beam is going to apply shear force on my plate. And this shear force is going to be transferred from my steel plate to my core bell. And then from my core bell or bracket to my column through a plane. And this plane is this, or the plane of transfer is going to be this plane here. Or the connection between my corbel and my column. So, again, if you look at this image, we can see that the corbel is basically a part of my column. It's coming out of my column. So, this plane here is going to be the plane where this shear transfer is going to occur. Now, if my concrete was not strong enough to resist this shear force I'm going to have shear failure here along this plane so I have to reinforce my structure in order to ensure the safe transfer of my shear force from my uh, core belt to my column so this is my first failure criteria and this is the first reinforcement we are going to pay attention to now the second failure criteria that I have is my tension tie. Now when it comes to my tension tie, again, we have a shear force here. And we have a distance A. Now this shear force by distance is going to create a moment. And this moment is going to cause tension top and compression bottom so what I need to do is I need to reinforce my structure against this tension that is occurring due to the moment that is being applied so this is my first tension reinforcement that I need to take into consideration now when we say tension tie I have two criteria first which is my mu which is VU times a and my second case is due to my NUC which is due to temperature effect. So again, we said that my beam is going to be placed here. And this beam, due to temperature effects, is going to either shrink or elongate. And with time, this beam is going to have the tendency to bend downwards or to deform in some kind of way along this direction. Now, what's happening here is that my beam is fixed from this direction here. So, what's going to happen is that I'm going to have an outward force 
and this outward force is a tension force and this tension force that is being created by by my beam due to the fact that it is restricted has to be transferred from my corbel to my column and this transfer is going to occur through my tension reinforcement so again just to try to simplify things I have my beam that is supported on my plate here now this beam is restricted and due to its restriction it's going to uh, apply an outward tension force and this outward tension force needs to be transferred to my column from my corbel and this transfer is going to occur through tension reinforcement so we now we talk about tension ties I am reinforcing my corbel for uh, against the combined effects and this combined effect is the combined effect of my MU which is VU times A and my NUC which is basically we said NUC is due to temperature effects and due to the restriction of my beam which causes this outward tension force uh, and this tension needs to be safely transferred from my beam to my uh, from my beam to my corbel and from my corbel to my column so let's just remove these okay now okay now the third type of compression strut that I have or the third type of failure that I have is compression strut so when I'm talking about the compression strut again we go back to our shear force we have a shear force that is applied by my beam and what's going to happen is that my concrete is going to create a pressure or it's going to counteract this shear force However, if my concrete is not strong enough, what's going to happen is that my concrete is going to crush. So we need to make sure that we don't allow this to happen. And we can do this by using one of two methods. One, we can either depend on my F prime C. So we use a big F prime C so my concrete is strong enough to counteract this shear force. Two, we can add a confinement bar and we are going to see what a confinement bar is later on but it's similar to a stirrup basically so it's either we depend on the F prime C of my concrete or we depend on my confinement bars now the fourth and final type of failure that we have is my localized bearing now we are talking about localized bearing this usually means that we have two uh, elements two structural elements that are supported on one another so here we said that we have my beam again and this beam is supported on my plate and this shear force is transferred we said from my plate to my beam uh, or to my corbel and from my corbel to my column however this shear force along this direction here if we look at this point this shear force might be too big and what's going to happen is due to this material due to my core my plate is a steel plate and because it is a steel plate the steel plate is stronger than my concrete then what what might occur is that this this uh, distance here or this this distance here might just fail it might crush and it's not necessarily because my plate is a steel plate my plate can be concrete however my shear force might be too high and due to this shear force being too high and this distance is too low then what's going to happen is that I'm going to have a localized bearing within this area and this area is going to crush because this here, this point is my weak point and the shear is going to transfer it, to be transferred to this point as well. So what I need to do is I need to prevent this from happening by either adding reinforcement here, like this, that is going into my corbel, or I can add a steel angle basically let's just change the color a steel angle beneath my 
uh, plate so that I prevent uh, uh, localized bearing from occurring around this area. So I can use one of these two methods to try and prevent this area from failing by either adding reinforcement to make it stronger or by adding a steel plate as well to make uh, to prevent this force or to prevent this area from being a weak point. So again, we uh, have covered the four different types of failures. One, which was my shear plane, tension tie, compression strut, localized bearing. So when I talk about my shear plane, we said we are going to add reinforcement that is perpendicular to the plane of failure, which is like this. This is going to be my shear reinforcement. And when I talk about my tension tie, when I my tension tie, I'm going to add a reinforcement along this direction here in order to resist the combined effect of my MU, which is VU times A, and my NUC, which is due to the restriction of my beam, which is creating an outward tension force. And we want to safely transfer this tension from my core bell to my uh, column. And three, my compression strut, we said we either depend on, I, on my F prime C or my confinement bars or stirrups. And localized bearing, we said to fix my localized bearing to prevent this area here from fading we are going to either add a steel angle or we are going to add reinforcement along this direction here. So these are basically the types of failures that we have and the reinforcements we are going to use. In my next lecture, we are going to start with the design of my core bell. So I'll see you then.